Welcome to another episode of Eberhardt's Outdoors. This one will be uh, kind of interesting because this one's going to be on what I actually carry in my backpack. And I haven't taken this backpack out of my tote since the end of season last year. So I actually don't know what's in it <laughs> other than the basics. Uh, first, first off, this is a scent lock backpack, a custom scent lock backpack. I had them send me some fabric and I had it custom made by Kel, uh, Kathy Kelly Designs. And the unique thing about this is it's a very limp, uh, it's a limp, thick nap, deep nap fleece. And it also has obviously uh, activated carbon in it and it's also waterproof. So what's unique about a pack like this, there's a lot of packs out there now that are in my opinion, I don't like them because they have a frame to them. They have a, a stuff, they're made out of fabric where when you take the stuff out of your pack, your pack stays the same shape. Whereas when you have something that's limp like this, first off, it's deadly quiet because there's absolutely, it's fleece, it's fleece. So it's, there's no noise whatsoever. But when you take your stuff out of it, like in the winter, when you got a lot of layer garments, you take them out. The pack actually, because it's so limp, it actually will fold down against the tree nice. So it, it's not sticking out, which is just something more to, to get picked. I worry about that in Michigan all the time. Getting picked is a big deal. I don't worry about getting winded, but I definitely worry about getting picked because most of the deer I shoot are when the foliage is down and you're in a tree with no background other than the sky. So anyway, this is my pack. It's a pretty basic pack. It has two big side pockets one on each side and it has a big front pocket and other than that all it has is one big main pocket. I don't particularly care to wear a watch because it's too hard to pull my sleeves up to look at the time and I never carry a cell phone when I'm hunting. I'm there to hunt. I'm not there to text people. Um, I'll never forget when I, uh, I rep for Manzella gloves which in my opinion they're owned by isotoners and when they came out with the first touch tip gloves for texting, you know, I was like, well, who in the hell's going to buy these, you know, at a sales meeting. And when I took them out on the road and showed them to people, oh my God, I couldn't believe all these young buyers in their twenties and thirties. First thing they did is give me that glove and they put it on and they'd pull their phone out and they wanted to see if it actually worked. And I'm going back 10 years when texting gloves first came out and Isotoners was the first one and they put it in Manzella line, which is Isotoners hunting gloves. So anyway, I don't carry a cell phone, so I carry a phone, I carry a watch, and I just basically put it on one of the D-rings on the back of my pack. So uh, when this is hanging in the tree, because it's always hanging to my right, I always turn this so that it's facing me, so I can look and see the time at any, at any moment. Now in the front pocket, I may pull a rabbit out of here because I don't know what's in it. <laughs> I have my scent lock gloves. I'm gonna have to totally deabsorb all this stuff and everything I do after making all these videos because this stuff is, I would never handle this stuff the way I'm handling it now. I just touch my backpack with my scent lock gloves on. But anyway, there's my scent lock gloves for entry and exits. Uh, I like a 3 8 inch diameter rope, uh, or quarter inch, I'm sorry. I don't like those little thin ropes that you can buy unless it's something I'm going to leave in a tree on private property where it's left dangling all the time. But for hunting and, in, you know, pulling your bow up in the dark or letting it down in the dark, uh, I like something heavier that doesn't tangle so easy. Those little ropes get tangled so easy. And when you get a bigger diameter rope like this, it's nice and limp and it does not get tangled up and knotted up. Obviously, I put in some steps in the last few trees I hunted because this here is a piece of conduit. And this is what I use to tighten up steps or remove steps. This basically, the step sticks out, this goes over the step, and then I turn it because they're all folders and I screw it in or take it out with this. Just makes it a lot easier. Four flashlights. Another piece of conduit. Uh, for my entries, I'm usually using one of these. Either this single AAA Flashlight, that's all I use for an entry, and I usually cut my hand around the front of it, so it's basically like this. And all I'm using this for is to see the ground in front of me or the next tack, that's it. I would never even consider wearing a headlamp on an entry or an exit, because when I move my head, there's 200, 300 lumens shining all through the woods, and if you don't think that spooks deer, 
you haven't been deer hunting very long. Uh, this is another one. This one here is a two, three cell. And I put tape around the outside of the, because this was clear plastic. So I just put electrical tape around it. And again, it's a very, very dim light. And I carry two just in case it's a really long entry. Because this one here, because it's a single AAA, this one wears out pretty quick. I'm changing batteries in this quite often. And then these two flashlights are both uh, two, two double A's. And these are what I use if I have to blood trail something. Obviously, they're a lot brighter. And one of them widen, has a beam that widens or goes into a tight beam. And I also have this. This here is a, uh, I don't even know what the hell this is called. It's a dough bleed, obviously. It takes the place of a can, but it's a little bit louder. And when I said I don't know what it's called, I don't know the manufacturer. This was like $50. But it's really cool. It gives the same exact consistent sound every time. Um, it's pretty awesome. There's no name on it, so I, I couldn't tell you where I got that. But it is really, really cool. Okay, this side pocket over here. I'm going to have to put some of this back in here. Or I'm going to lose my space. Okay, this side pocket, now when my pack is hanging, and again, it's hanging to my right, it's hanging on the right side of the tree at about 120 degrees from where I'm facing the tree. That way, if I have to move 90 degrees to my right and move to the next set of steps, because I'm a ring of steps guy, if I have to move 90 degrees to my right, this is still gonna be 30 degrees off my right shoulder. Yet it's still at 120 degrees from where I'm standing on the steps, it's something I can easily reach into and grab anything out of it. I know where everything's at in my pack. I can do it blindfolded in, ten, in five seconds, probably. So the reason I said that point about this being 120 degrees, that puts this pocket closest to me. And this pocket here, this side pocket, has all my calls in it. So this here is a grunt wheeze. And this has a higher volume because this is an exhale grunt call. This here is something I've had about 30 years. I've made this out of an old Eddie Salter call, inhale grunt, and it's very soft. So if I have to call, if I have to make a grunt call and a deer's relatively close, this is what I use. If it's at a distance, I use the exhale for more volume. Also have a doe bellow call. I have a rattle bag, and I'm gonna do a a uh, fake tactics video. So I'm gonna go through all of this stuff in more detail, but this is what I use for rattling. And I do more sparring than I do rattling. I don't do a lot of that aggressive stuff like you see on TV, because where I'm at, that scares deer, because there's not mature bucks like that to fight, fight with each other. I also carry a folding saw. Uh, this one here happens to be a Gerber, what I have in here, but I typically have a Wicked. Uh, Wicked has been out in the market for, I don't know, maybe five years now. They make really good premium saws. Um, and they also make a saw that has a, a um, pelvic blade. So basically you can, you can use the pelvic blade for cutting the pelvic open down here when you want to take out the, the bladder and stuff like that. So I always carry a saw. You never know when you're going to have to cut something. So I just carry a little hand saw. I never use that when I'm prepping locations. It's too small of a stroke but I carry that when I'm hunting. So that's it for that. Now on the side pocket on the other side, and I don't get into this one very often, but I have water. Obviously I drank some of it. And I have a pee bottle. And the pee bottle obviously is glass and it's uh, got a bigger throat. So I carry that and a pee bottle. And then in the main pocket, I carry knee pads. Always, always wear knee pads anymore. For the first 20 years I hunted out of a saddle, I did not use knee pads. And uh, these are trophy line knee pads. Uh, Tethered is also coming out with some knee pads. They should be available probably in late August, maybe September. 
but these are trophy lines and they've worked really really well very comfortable i think those were like 40 dollars obviously i carry my saddle this is my saddle with the tree tether rope on it same one that's the one i've been using for since 1981 i have not changed i've made a lot of modifications to it but that's the actual saddle i bought in 1981 that i'm using i carry the best pair of binoculars made uh they're made by miopta they're made out of the czech republic and these are just small framed 8 by 25s but uh, i'll put these up against just about anybody that's got a 8 by 32s you know, I wouldn't go against an 8x42, that's a lot bigger field of view, but Miopta is a company, they employ about 2,500 people. Bem and Swarovski are the two premium glass makers in the world. Um, kind of cracks me up, everybody's into Vortex, and Vortex, I don't even place Vortex in the top 10. They don't make anything. Everything they do is sourced through some Oriental companies. Uh, this, this company, Swarovski, companies like Zeiss, Leica, they actually manufacture their own goods. That's why they're more expensive. They use a lot more premium glass. They don't use a lot of glue on the internals of their, their optics to hold stuff together. They actually machine it tight enough where they don't have to glue it. That's why, that's why Vortex has, you know, these have lifetime warranties, but you have to send them in. It's not replacement over the counter because Vortex has so much margins in their stuff. They can afford to do it over the counter. And Vortex also, they sponsor so many TV and hunting shows that everybody thinks they're awesome because all the TV guys obviously get paid to say they are, but they're not even, in my, pers in, in my opinion, they're not even in the top 10. Uh, Miopta, if you look at an M1, all the M1 Abrams tanks that the USA manufactures, they use Miopta glass in the sighting systems, the most premium glass you can get. And even though these are eight by 25s, typically eight by 25s suck. Literally, they're terrible. You can't, there's no field of view. You can see a lot through these eight by 25 Mioptas and they're very small. I carry an inner pack, which I'm going to go through that. And this here was a layer garment. This here is a Rivers West, uh, just a, basically a street jacket. It's a heavy fleece, waterproof membrane, polyurethane membrane uh, jacket. And I wear that as one of my layer garments. I also have a rangefinder. This particular one's made by Redfield, but they're all pretty much the same. And then I also carry, and I did a grabber, you know, air activated warmer video. Got into that in pretty much great detail. But when I use warmers, I never carry the warmers in the packages that they came in when I bought them. I always take them out of the packages and I put them in a Ziploc quart freezer bag. Freezer bags are heavier plastic, so they won't get holes punctured in them as easily. And the reason I take them out of the packaging that they come in is they're very noisy. I do the same thing if I'm going to be on an all-day sit and I take granola bars and Hershey bars and stuff like that. I'll take them out of the package because the packages are so noisy to open. And I'll put the actual chocolate, granola bars, you know, the raw bars in a Ziploc bag so that I'm not making noise when I open it. So anyway, uh, another purpose, that, another reason I use the Ziploc bags is because once I get done using them, a lot of these warmers nowadays, they'll last 10, 12, you know, some of them are 18 hours now. Body warmers are up to 18 hours. So if you, if you, op you know, if you use them once and you only hunt for four hours or five hours where you actually have them on, you know, maybe the first hour and a half you didn't need them, then you put them on when you started getting cold. Um, once you take them off, if you overlap them, and then put them in back in the bag and seal the bag shut, they quit working. So you can get two and sometimes even three uses out of a, you know, a 12 or an 18 hour warmer. Typically a hand warmer because they're seven hours. Uh, most of them are seven hours. It's a one-time use, but they're making t hand warmers now that are 10 hours. I know grabbers are going to 10 hours. So you can get two uses out of that. Same deal with the mega warmers. Mega warmers are 12 hours. Uh, toe warmers are definitely a one and done. Toe warmers are one and done. Uh, but anyway, plastic bag, and I keep that at the bottom, so if I ever need them, I've got them. This particular pack also has some extra pockets on the back side, the back wall. And I carry some chloroseptic pills in here in case I have a sore throat. In this pocket here, down here in the bottom, I've got a compass. Because again, I don't take my cell phone, so I don't have a compass or I have Onyx, but I don't use it when I'm hunting. 
I carry reflective bread ties and I also carry reflective tacks. And that's in case I kill a deer because I'm always by myself and I usually get them out by myself. So when I kill a deer and I recover it, I'll tack the area, especially in an evening when I got to go take off all my stuff, my scent lock and get rid of my pack and bring in the cart. I'll put some tacks around the area so that when I come back to find it in the dark, pitch black, it's going to be easy for me to find with a flashlight. Because a lot of times when you, uh, you kill a deer and it runs 100 yards and you're in a swamp, yeah, try finding it when you come back after dark with a cart. It's very, very difficult. So if you take some markers with you, it's a lot easier to find if you mark the area. Uh, take some tissues. And then in this other pocket, the zipper pocket, that's where I have my hunting license. Extra key to my van in case I lock myself out. Uh, my gutting saw or gutting knife and uh, Gerber also makes those little uh, pelvic blades so basically you see how short those teeth are that's for cutting open the pelvic so I can take this blade and I can put it put it on that saw oh my goodness that's hard to get it in there and that's about it other than this this is a fanny pack so when I first get in the tree tether up first thing I do I put my I put my knee pads on at the base of the tree before I climb and then I also put my saddle on at the base of the tree I don't wear it from the vehicle I put that on at the base of the tree along with my knee pads then I climb the tree and then once I'm up in the tree the first thing I do is take take out of my pack once I'm tethered to the tree is I take out this fanny pack and I hang it on the same hook as I do the backpack. So it's basically overlapping the backpack until I get until I'm in the sitting and hunting position. And this has a scent lock head cover. I never hunt without a scent lock head cover. 40% of your odor comes out of your head. Hair follicles are where most of it comes from. When you wash your hair in the morning or in the evening, whatever, you wash your hair during the daytime, in the nighttime it gets oily, and that's bacteria. Uh, so head cover, drop down face mask, you want it covering your neck because you perspire around your neck a lot. People who have beards, you definitely need one of this if you want to have any semblance of a scent control. You have to have a head cover with a drop down face mask where basically the only thing you, may, you can see, a deer can see is your eyes. Um, and for that purpose, I also wear a spandiflage. Uh, now the spandiflage, as you can tell, I've wore this a lot. It's a little bit beat up. <laughs> and I've probably got 20 of these. So, spandiflage basically goes over my face. I put little eye holes in it. So that's basically what I have there. And then I take the head cover. if I can find the opening. There we go. I always pull a head cover so it just covers the front line of my hair. And if you notice, there's a safety pin on the bottom of it. And I do that so that I can safety pin, I can safety pin the bottom of my head cover, the drop down face mask, I'll pin it on something underneath my jacket, then I'll pull the jacket and zip it up. And then this here is gonna come up here like this. So this is gonna be the way I'm actually hunting. And you'd also be shocked when it's really cold out. This little spandiflage, it keeps your cheeks warm. It, it, it has a lot of warmth, even though it's extremely meshy looking. It works really, really well. And I also do not wear, this is going to come as a shock, I do not wear scent lock gloves when I'm actually in the tree physically hunting. Uh, I wear them into the tree, I wear them up the tree, I wear them down the tree, I wear them on my exits. So if I touch any vegetation, I'm not worrying about odor. But when I'm physically in the tree and hunting, I wear a pair of these Manzella gobblers. They don't make these anymore, but Manzella makes two different pair of gloves. One's called a a uh, ranger and the other one's called a snake and they when you put them on they fit tight to your hand 
They're really, really good gloves. I just happen to have bought in quite a few of these gobblers and they're, they have a lot of elastic in them, so they've, they're really tight to your hand. So I, I like these a lot better than the Sunlock gloves. Um, not a big fan of the way Sunlock makes their gloves. I love Sunlock. I think it's the baddest stuff out there because I never pay attention to wind, but I just don't like their gloves when I'm physically hunting in the tree. Um, arm guard, Ernie told me from uh, Tethered, he asked me which one of my Civil War buddies gave me this old arm guard because as you can tell, it's old. It's probably 40 years old. I have two, two releases. I use Carter releases. I have a spare just in, just in case I drop one. I have a quiver adapter. So this basically screws into the tree and then my quiver comes off my bow and slides into this slot. And I usually put this over my head. So it's going this way. The arrows are going this direction, out of the way. And I carry quite a few bow and gun holders. And these are in case, a lot of times when I prep a tree and then I go back to hunt it for the first time, I may need an extra bow holder hanging someplace, or I may need to move something around. So uh, I carry these extra bow holders just for that purpose. Or if I want to get down and freelance someplace, then I've got bow holders. I leave the other stuff in the preset tree, and I just go, you know, I, my biggest buck I ever shot was 180 incher, and that's exactly what I did. I was hunting in the morning. I didn't like what I was seeing. I saw movement about 200 yards. This is during peak rut. 200 yards farther back, 250 yards, because the foliage was down, I had a big visual. And I took the steps out of the tree as I was going down and I freelanced back there and I shot 180 incher that same day. So uh, these are nice for, if, it's always nice to have extra stuff, especially small stuff like this that doesn't add a lot of weight. And then in this side pocket here, There's that damn extra carter. I bought one of these yesterday because I couldn't find my spare. <laughs> and there it is. Damn. But it, yeah, no doubt. So this is something that a lot of people might not think of. It's antihistamine pills. And when you're hunting, a lot of times you'll have a cold and you'll have a runny nose, especially when it's cold out, you know, your nose always runs. So I always carry antihistamine pills and I'll take a couple of them and uh, I always make sure I get the non-drowsy, um, you know, the, the daytime, and it stops my nose and my eyes from watering. And when it's cold out, that's a big deal, or if you have a cold. I got that idea from years ago, back before they made good rain gear, because I'd hunt in the rain and I would just get soaked and I would always get, I would always get the, a cold or the flu during season because I'd sit up in the tree and shiver because my body's wet, but I was hunting, I loved hunting in the rain, so that's what I was doing. Uh, but anyway, that's my backpack, all the gear that I carry in it. Uh, obviously, layer-wise, you know, when it's really cold, I might have three different pieces of layering garments. Um, this is usually the one I wear directly below my exterior because this one here is windproof, waterproof. Um, so it, if, if I am wearing something permeable as my exterior garment, sunlock garment, as soon as wind permeates through that, this here blocks it from permeating into my body and making me cold. Because I don't care how many layers of clothing you have on if they're all permeable and it's cold and it's windy, they're going to blow through it within an hour and a half to two hours and you're going to get cold. You have to have something to block the wind if it's cold and windy out. Um, well, thanks for viewing this and uh, I hope you took something away from it. Okay, I did a, pa a backpack. I did a backpack video earlier. What I carry in my hunting pack, and I forgot. Uh, I didn't forget. This actually was not in it. I had it in my dresser at home, so this was not in it when I was pulling all my stuff out. And this here it just happens to be made by Leupold, but it's a thermal imaging unit. And this is actually designed for recovering dead deer, you know, stuff like that. But I bought it for a different purpose. My purpose on this is I hunt a lot of destination locations, mass trees, fruit trees, primary scrape areas, uh, you know, stuff like that, uh, you know, along a standing cornfield where deer may be coming back and forth, uh, in bed interiors of bedding areas. And what I bought this for was on evening hunts, typically I'm gonna sit at least, you know, 
20 minutes to a half hour after dark, so I'm not spooking anything with my exit. Everything's gone. But I'm going to turn this on, and I did it last year, actually, and I can actually look around, especially at a master or a fruit tree. I can actually make a little scope around me and make sure there's nothing standing there that I can't see, because obviously after dark, it's dark, and I can't see, I can't see much. So uh, there's been a lot of times where I'll get down out of a out of a tree next to an apple or next to a white oak tree and for my exit and you know I spook a deer and I thought you know I hadn't heard anything come in I thought everything had left that had been there earlier but I'd spook a deer so this should take care of that problem because I absolutely hate spooking deer if you're hunting pressured property it's a big deal not to spook deer you know when I'm hunting out west it's not a big yank but uh, that's what I bought this for it's a loophole thermal imaging unit Thanks for watching another episode of Eberhard Outdoors and please like and subscribe.